Good evening, folks, and welcome to tonight's City Council meeting and Committee of the Whole meeting. First will be the Council meeting, and we begin all Council meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance, and I would like to ask our City Clerk, Roger Godskison, to please lead us in the pledge. Can you do the hmm? Can you do the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I was reminded by our city attorney that usually we do the roll call first. So, but forgive me for rushing to be here. So, now, Mr. Clerk, would you kindly take the roll call? Hello. Bruno. Here. Lockhart. Here. Ruby. Here. Cabin. Here. Gilbert. Here. Kostrog. Here. Maladra. Here. Marks is. Marks here. Mayor. Here. Swanson. Here. We have a full house tonight, folks. We will jump to item three on the council agenda. Item 3A in particular is to consider approval of ordinance number 2022-16, adding one class C3 liquor license for the Royal Wren, located at 11 South 3rd Street. So moved. Motion by Alderman Bruno. Second. Seconded by Alderman Swanson. I don't know if our friends from the Royal Wren are here tonight or not, but we're very excited about this opportunity, but and then I will turn it over to Stephanie for a brief introduction. So this one, the applicant would like to add the ability to offer alcoholic liquors for consumption on and off premise, and therefore they need to upgrade their license to a C3 license. Uh, the liquor commissioner has reviewed the request and recommends approval, and this would be effective May 1, and they would relinquish their current license and get the new license subject to your all's approval this evening. We have a motion by Bruno, a second by Swanson. Any questions or comments for either the Liquor Commissioner or Ms. Dawkins, or perhaps Kathleen Tomaschenko. Sensing none, seeing none, a roll call vote will be in order. Mr. Clerk, whenever you're ready, sir. Burkhart. Aye. Ruby. Aye. Caven. Aye. Kilberg. Aye. Kostrog. Aye. Maladra. Aye. Marks. Marks, aye. Mayor. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. The item has been approved with 10 votes in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Item 3B, consider approval of special event application from the Geneva Chamber of Commerce for the 2022 Geneva Classic Car Shows with a request for city services at no cost to the applicant. Is there a motion to put this on the floor? So, so moved. Seconded. I believe that was Bruno with the motion and Kilberg with the second. <clears throat> Ms. Dawkins? Uh, so the Geneva Chamber of Commerce holds a classic car show on Thursday evenings from early July to the end of August at the Kane County Courthouse parking lot. The car show requires the use of electricity for the food vendor and entertainment, trash service, and police services to close the streets for the finale uh, cruise night parade. The city code does not provide staff the authority to waive the expense associated with these services, and as such, this item is being brought to the city council for your review and determination as to whether to waive the expenses as requested by the Geneva Chamber of Commerce. Uh, you will have noticed on the packet this evening there was a question regarding what these expenses, so most of the expenses are handled with on-duty staff. Uh, the usage of the electric is minimal, but again, the code doesn't provide us that opportunity to just say okay, so that's why it's before you this evening. Any questions, any comments regarding this matter? I lost Alderman Marks on the screen. I'm assuming there, be there he is. It should be back. There, I'm sorry there about that, that's that okay. was my any, side. Any questions, sir? No, no, none at all, thank you. Alderman Mayor has a question. So um, services like portalettes or anything like that are not part of this? Or? No, the chamber provides all of those. This okay. is just literally for city services. Okay, thank you. A voice vote is sufficient on this matter, ladies and gentlemen. All in favor of item 3B, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? With a vote of 10 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, item 3B has been approved. Item 3C is a public hearing on the establishment of special service area number 34. I will entertain a motion to open this public hearing on this matter. Motion by Mr. Kosarov, seconded by Ms. Mayor. 
The public hearing is open on this matter, which is item 3C, on the establishment of special service area number 34. Is there any information you'd like to add to this? We need to vote on that. Yeah, we, we do. I'm going to ask Stephanie anything you want to add prior to the vote? I just think we need to um, acknowledge that we did receive uh, testimony on this item, and those will be included as part of the minutes. Okay. From a Dr. Rod Nelson. All in favor of opening the public hearing, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Anyone aye. opposed? Okay. The public hearing is open, folks. This public hearing is for those who wish to comment on this matter from the community, not from the dais. Anyone here this evening? Anyone joining us remotely who wishes to speak, Mr. McCready? No. Is there a motion, ladies and gentlemen, to close the public hearing on this matter? So moved. Motion by Alderman Bruno, seconded by Ms. Burkhart. All in favor of closing the public hearing, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The public hearing is closed. Item 3D, public hearing on annexation agreement by and between the City of Geneva and HIP, is it V1 or 6? Either one. Okay, what the heck. HIP V6 Enterprises, LLC, care of Hillwood. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? No. Mr. Swanson makes that motion. Seconded by Mr. Kosarog. Anything you want to add, Stephanie, before I take the vote? Yep. All in favor of opening the public hearing, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Mark, Mark's Anyone? aye. Again, ladies and gentlemen, this public hearing is open for the comments or questions from anyone in the community. Prior to a presentation, we will entertain by the applicant. Yes, sir. We just kindly ask you to state your name. And yes, uh, Hendrik Reich, 674 Green Meadow Lane. Good to see you, sir. Yep, same here. Um, I just wanted to say with regards to this project, as a nearby resident, I appreciated the transparency and consistency in the entire planning process. It seems like that the applicant took the residents proactively into consideration nearby. I think it's a good project for the community and I would ask you to support it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. David Walensiak, 578 Lexington Drive. Um, the, I would like to second Hendrick's comment that uh, we were very glad to see the transparency that this builder put forth as compared to what we've seen before. Uh, and on the surface, it looks like they can be a very good neighbor uh, to Geneva. Uh, the only comment I have on the actual designs that I was looking at, and that's the overall grading plans, is right now the homes on Kirk Road are at 785 feet. The berm is at 780, so it's actually five feet lower, and their lot, number one, the building, is at 776, so that berm it really is only four feet higher. The only comment that I would have is that it would be nice, maybe if that berm was a little higher, at least a minimum of six feet, so that at least you wouldn't see the vehicles. There's no way, uh, even with trees and that on there, um, it, that you're gonna hide the building. You're, you're gonna see the building, and I don't think there's anything wrong. In fact, uh, from what I understand, it's gonna be an all marble. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, but, uh, it would be nice at least if it was at least six feet high, you wouldn't see the tops of, of most vehicles because six feet, you know, most vehicles probably are limited to about six feet in height. Um, and the only other thing that wasn't called out in the documentation that maybe they can address is what kind of trees they are, whether they are trees with leaves or evergreens, because if they're, uh, the ones that are just, you know, maples, ash, well, not ash anymore, but uh, if they are trees with leaves, then the, for visual and sound deadening, that's only good for six months out of the year. We, we would like to see if at all possible, because again, we don't know what's going to be going in between them 
and the residential area. So if we put, you know, it could be six months, it could be 10, 10 more years be before something goes in there. So it would be nice to maybe see uh, evergreens in there so it would have more of a blockage. So those are my two comments concerning the property. And again, um, it, it looks like a good thing for Geneva. Thank Th you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Either joining us here in the council chamber or Mr. McCready, anyone online? No one raising their hand. There is a presentation to be made by the applicant. If no one objects from the dais, I'll entertain that opportunity now. Good evening. <clears throat> I brought my technical assistant. <laughs> that is good technical assistance right there. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, members of city staff. I'm Don Schoenheider with Hillwood. Uh, we are delighted to be here tonight and appreciate the opportunity to give you a brief presentation on our Fox Valley Commerce Center project. Uh, we are pleased to get positive feedback from the community and will work closely with the community and city staff to make sure we satisfy some concerns that were voiced this evening. Uh, just a brief introduction, Hillwood is a private investment development firm. We're based in Dallas. Uh, we're just over 30 years old. We were started actually by the Perot family. Ross Perot Sr., Ross Perot Jr. were our two founders. Uh, I always like to ask, raise your hand to see who voted. Um, unfortunately, we, we lost Ross Sr. a couple of years ago, but Ross Jr. is still our chairman, and he still brings the culture that Ross Sr. Uh, started the company with and continues uh, the spirit and cooperation in the community sense that we're all very proud of. Give you a sense, we are a national and international developer. Uh, we're active particularly throughout the Midwest here. We're also uh, active in overseas, the UK, Germany. We're the largest developer right now of warehouse and distribution space in Poland. Uh, but our primary focus is here in the United States. Being around 30 years or so, uh, we have a long history of customers and relationships. And this is just a sample of the companies who we are proud to say have been in our buildings and continue to be in our buildings. Customers we have relationships with that have very often done multiple transactions with us, both here in the United States and around the country and around the world. Another little quick snippet of different kinds of companies, uh, different industry categories, a uh, variety of different firms that we've worked with. Just a quick snapshot of the project that was uh, presented to the Plan Commission a couple of weeks ago, uh, and we're here tonight to ask approval for. Uh, this is a potential four building development on 76.2 acres. Uh, our plan is to develop phase one, uh, beginning with the two buildings you see in blue on the left. Uh, our hope is as we move through the project and begin to lease up, those two buildings will continue with phase two, with buildings number three and four. Uh, I think it's important, and one of the things the gentleman uh, mentioned a moment ago is the, the building on the far left, building number one, as part of phase one, the only thing that will be facing Kirk Road and the residence off of Kirk Road will be the, the actually the office frontage uh, on, the, on the buildings, and the only vehicles you'll be able to see will be cars. Uh, so we'll work very closely with the community and with staff to make sure that that's adequately burned planted with a combination of, of uh, deciduous and not deciduous trees. Uh, we want to make sure that we're good neighbors as well. The buildings look good. We're proud of the way these buildings look, the buildings we built, and we're proud of the way they're designed and developed, and I think they will be, will be, will be very good neighbors for the community. I think a couple of the things that we talked about and I just wanted to briefly hit on, you know, everyone talks about the idea that in today's world, everyone's very focused on logistics, e-commerce, and distribution. I think it's interesting to see that um, in the last three years, uh, the kind of a sense of the existing industry profile that's in the Fox Valley and the kinds of really companies that are here are really much more than just warehouse and distribution. Service companies, assembly and production, R&D kinds of companies, and we believe these are the kinds of companies that will lease the buildings here at the Fox Valley Commerce Center. Very similar, you can see within the Fox Valley confines, uh, we believe that the majority of the tenants that we attract, even though we've got a lot of national relationships, 
uh, will be companies that are currently here in the Fox Valley that are looking to grow and expand and add their employment base here, right here in the city of Geneva. One of the things that we're very proud of as well is uh, our focus on sustainability. Uh, just very briefly, you can see how these buildings will be developed with energy efficient materials, uh, use of low VOC products, water efficient landscaping. We'll be designing uh, preferred parking for low emitting and, and fuel efficient vehicles and we'll also uh, design uh, electric vehicle charging stations that our tenants can use as that world becomes uh, more prominent and more uh, apparent as time goes on. And there's a picture of Ross Sr. and Ross Jr. and uh, our favorite bird. Um, so that's our presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll look forward to having questions later on. Thank you very much. That presentation, ladies and gentlemen, was in reference to the public hearing. Okay. Is there anyone else either in the chamber or online who wishes to address matters as it relates to the public hearing? If not, I'll entertain a motion from the dais to close the public hearing. Second. Motion by Maladra, seconded by Kosarog. All in favor of closing the public hearing, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Mark, aye. Ten votes in the affirmative to close the public hearing. The hearing is closed. We jump to item four on the agenda, folks. Amendments to the agenda. Are there any amendments? to be made this evening. Item five is the omnibus agenda. All items marked with an asterisk are considered to be retained by this council and can be considered and voted upon with one motion. Is there such a motion? So moved. Alderman Swanson makes that motion. Second. Seconded by Alderman Bruno. Mr. Clerk, whenever you're ready, sir, take the roll. Ruby. Aye. Caven. Aye. Gilbert. Aye. Kasrag. Aye. Maladra. Aye. Marks. Marks, aye. Mayor. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Burkhardt. Aye. The omnibus agenda has been approved with 10 affirmative votes, zero nay votes. Therefore, it is adopted. Jumping down to item 10, municipal bills for payment, we kindly ask our clerk to read the bills in their aggregate for our consideration. Total bills are $4 million. $12,487.78. Mayor, I move that we approve and pay the bills as read. The individual items that add up to that amount can be found in tonight's packet on the city council or on the city website. Oh, almost flawless, too. We were so. I, I'm, I'm out of practice. Like we, 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 you should have seen the tumult when you weren't here. I should have reported. <laughs> yeah, Alderman Mayor tried the last time. It took a half an hour. Is, is there a second to Mr. Bruno's motion? Seconded by Ms. Berghardt. Any questions or comments at all about the municipal bills for payment? Mr. Clerk, whenever you're ready, sir, please take the roll. Caven. Aye. Kilberg. Aye. Kostrog. Aye. Maladra. Aye. Marks. Marks, aye. Mayor. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Burkhardt. Aye. Ruby. Aye. The municipal bills have been adopted with a vote of 10 in the affirmative and zero in the negative. We're jumping down, folks, to item 12, presentation of ordinances, resolutions, petitions, and bids. Item 12A is to consider approval of ordinance number 2022-17, authorizing the execution of an annexation agreement by and between the City of Geneva and HIP-6 Enterprises. I changed it up a little bit there. LLC, care of Hillwood. Is there a motion to so consider? So moved. Second. Alderman Bruno made that motion, and that was seconded by Alderman Caven. Ms. Dawkins. Sure. So I'm going to kind of keep this short because the applicant gave you a brief presentation. Uh, but there are going to be four items for your consideration this evening. What I did want to point out is that the first item, which is the annexation agreement, does require eight affirmative votes, including the mayor, for passage. The second item, which is the annexation, includes a simple majority vote, but it also includes the mayor. He may vote. Uh, and then the last two items, the zoning map amendment and the preliminary plat of planned unit development, um, are both a simple majority vote of the city council. So I just wanted to make sure that you're aware of that. Um, 
But again, uh, there was quite sufficient or a lot of information in the packet, so hopefully you read all of that, and I think the applicant did a good job giving you a brief summary, so I'm going to keep my remarks at that. With that, I'll happy to open up the dais to questions or comments from the members of the council. Or Mr. Marks remotely. Ms. Ruby. Thank you. On, on all, are we just on A or? Just A? on A. Oh, okay, never yeah. mind then. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> on item 12A, forgive me, folks. There's been a motion by Bruno and a second by Caven to approve item 12A. A vote is in order, and I will kindly ask our city clerk. A reminder, folks, eight officers of the organization must vote in the affirmative in order to adopt this request. Kilberg. Aye. Kasrag. Aye. Maladra. Aye. Marks. Marks, aye. Mayor. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Burns. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Burkhart. Aye. Ruby. Aye. Cabin. Aye. Item 12A has been adopted with a vote of 11 in the affirmative, 0 in the negative. We jump to item 12B, folks. Consider approval of ordinance number 2022-18, annexing certain territory, parcel number 12-0-1-200-001, to the city of Geneva. Is there a motion? Mayor makes the motion. Kosarog makes the second. Ms. Dawkins, anything else you want to add? Questions or comments from the dais or via Randall Square? Oh, no, you're, you're in your office, aren't you, Rich? Yes, I am tonight. <laughs> yep, didn't get out of here soon enough. <laughs> Sensing none, seeing none. Mr. Clerk, whatever you're ready, sir. Kasarag. Aye. Maladra. Aye. Marks. Marks, aye. Mayor. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Burns. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Burkhardt. Aye. Ruby. Aye. Cabin. Aye. Kilbert. Aye. With a vote of 11 in the affirmative, 0 in the negative, item 12B has been approved and adopted. Item 12C, which again requires a simple majority vote, is to consider approval of ordinance number 2022-19, granting a zoning map amendment to rezone parcel number 12-01-200-001 from the RR Rural Single Family Residential to I-1 Light Industrial District upon annexation. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Bruno. Second. Second by Maladra. No additional information from Ms. Dawkins, therefore I'll open up the questions or comments from the dais. This is the quietest city council meeting. <laughs> Mr. Clerk, if you're still with us, please take the roll. Malaja. Aye. Marks. Marks, aye. Mayor. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Burkhardt. Aye. Ruby. Aye. Cabin. Aye. Gilberg. Aye. Kasrag. Aye. With a vote of 10 in the affirmative, 0 in the negative, item 12C has been approved and adopted. Item 12D, consider approval of ordinance number 2022-20, granting a preliminary plat of planned unit development and subdivision for the development of a 75.23 acre light industrial development. Is there a motion? So motion by Mr. Kilberg. Second. Seconded by Mr. Caven. I anticipate no additional comments from Ms. Dawkins, therefore questions or comments from the dais or remotely would be appropriate. Mr. Kilberg, then Ms. Ruby. I had a uh, couple of questions of the developer. Uh, in light of the, uh, the tragedy in uh, uh, southern Illinois as it relates to a warehouse that was hit by a tornado without any type of uh, protection for the employees and the fact that there's litigation now pending uh, against uh, both the city as well as the developer. Um, what are your intentions as it relates to storm protection for employees uh, in your warehouses? Uh, 
Alderman, I, I think number one, it was a tragic event, and I couldn't agree with you more. And um, one of our I largest, agree. one of our largest uh, tenants was involved in that, and I know they're particularly concerned about it. Um, the the safety related issues. Our our buildings are designed to withstand uh, high winds and as much inclement weather as there can be. Sometimes there are things that simply can't be controlled. But in terms of safety of employees, that's typically driven by and designed by the tenants in our buildings. Uh, every company has their own particular safety requirements and safety guidelines. Um, we work closely with them from an insurance perspective uh, to make sure that they're as good as they can be, but very often um, those are really decisions driven by the tenants. Uh, but I think they'll be even more focused on it going forward given what happened. Uh, could you uh, share your experiences with uh, some of your developments and tenants as it relates to, for instance, obviously you do a lot in Texas, which is uh, struck by a lot of tornadoes. Uh, what are those tenants currently doing to safeguard their employees? Uh, do, you, do you have any examples of measures that have been taken to, uh, to safeguard uh, employees and provide them with an opportunity to seek cover? Yeah, Alderman, I, I don't have anything specific. I know that in the instance of some of our tenants we have talked to, uh, there have been circumstances where um, tenants haven't allowed employees to have mobile phones or communication devices. I think that's been a discussion that's uh, ongoing with a lot of our tenants. I think it's an issue of warning, lead time, communication, uh, making sure that uh, there's enough uh, advance warning to get employees and associates out of the buildings and away from the buildings and into a safe place. Um, I'm happy to, to check into it with our team and get back to you. I don't have any specific examples other than I know that uh, several of our tenants have mentioned they want to increase the amount of communication they have with their associates in their buildings. It would seem that if you're going to incorporate this, it would be wise to, to incorporate something like this during the construction phase and that would probably minimize cost to the tenant I would think and I think it would be a selling feature uh, am I wrong no I think uh, Alderman we couldn't be more in alignment with wanting to make sure that these buildings are safe places for our customers and their employees um, as I said I think a little bit of the I, I don't want to say the challenge but the thing we need to be careful of is every tenant very often has specific safety issues that are tied directly to their business and so we'll work very closely with them to make sure that as we build the building out and finish the interior space whether that be the office manufacturing the warehouse area uh, we'll make sure that we work closely with their safety folks to to make sure we're paying attention as close as we can okay uh, I had uh, one more question as it relates to Geneva Drive and uh, what, are, what are your understanding as it relates to Geneva Drive and the potential extension of Geneva Drive in the future? Um, my understanding, well, the, the result of our project and the traffic study that was done and staff's review has been that the extension of Geneva Drive is not required for our project. Um, we have no plans to, to do that. The city uh, has told us and staff has told us that our, our traffic will not justify nor require the extension of Geneva Drive. Uh, so we, it, from our perspective going forward, Geneva Drive will not go through. Uh, you did a ask a very interesting question, which I will give you more color on. The city, I know, and we've talked to staff about uh, kind of cleaning up Geneva Drive. Uh, we want to limit uh, and we want to make sure the police department in the city enforces no parking there. Uh, and we want to make sure that that looks good. We, that's a gateway to our project uh, and is an important part of the community. And we want to make sure, and we've actually actually ran into a police officer at our last plan commission meeting who shared the same opinion that we did. And we want to make sure that looks good. So we're eager to, to get in there and make sure that uh, some improvements are made to that as well. If at some point in time uh, Geneva Drive w was, would be extended, you understand that uh, the parcel to the immediate uh, west of your parcel would need to be annexed into the city as well correct I that would really be up to city staff alderman um, again that's not our project um, we do understand that's not part of the city of Geneva um, we hope that yeah, in the interest of the community and staff and and the council believes it's a good thing if that were to happen but at this point in time we're not sure what will happen to the west we're very focused on our project and and the resulting impact and positive impact we think it'll have 
Is that a correct assumption? That an extension of Geneva Drive to the to the west, connecting with Kirk, would require annexation of the, the parcel immediately to the west of their parcel. I think irrespective of whether or not Geneva Drive would be connected, any development on that site would require annexation. Absolutely. So irrespective of the of the road issue, a development on that site would require annexation. Absolutely. Okay, let me phrase it a different way. Would Geneva be required to annex that parcel to construct a road on that parcel? Yes. That's all I had. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Ruby, and then Mr. Bruno. Thank you. So on the page where you talked about sus sustainability, mm -hmm. um, I was curious, you mentioned preferred parking for green vehicles. Um, are there any plans for charging stations? Actually, I, I did mention that we're going to put conduit in uh, throughout okay. the site for electric vehicle charging stations. We don't install them yet because we're not sure where the tenants want them. Sure. Uh, and to the extent, but we are definitely going to make uh, accommodations for that. Okay. Do you know how many? Uh, again, depends on the the demands by the okay. tenant. Okay. But they are on the plan. That's they great. are absolutely on the okay. plan. And um, one more big wish list item. Um, any intentions of a permeable parking lot? Uh, probably not in the interest of, of honesty. Um, permeable parking lots are very difficult to maintain. Okay. Um, we've designed the site and engineered the site so whatever projects we do we like to believe and we're confident that they will have a positive impact on stormwater and so permeable parking lots are really geared toward trying to manage stormwater issues. We think this site is designed and engineered, and our engineers here, if you have questions, uh, to ha make a positive impact on stormwater in the area. So permeable parking lots end up being very difficult to maintain, very high cost to maintain by our tenants, um, and they just end up being very difficult to kind of manage. Um, candidly, some of the permeable parking lots we have done don't look great after a while. Sure. Um, and so we want this project to look terrific today, and we want it to look terrific in 20 years. Okay. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bruno, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, each of these buildings, uh, these are spec buildings. You don't have tenants presently. Correct. But these could be single-tenant buildings. They could be multi-tenant buildings. Correct. So building uh, employee safety, if it were a three-tenant building, you, you could put employee safety in one and isolate it from the other. So that's that's completely up to the tenant. It's completely up to the tenant, but it's also very much driven by local codes, whether it be fire protection or uh, otherwise. So um, yeah, it, it really is driven by each tenant and each individual uh, demands that they may have. Thank you. Miss mm -hmm. Mayor. <clears throat> My questions are mostly for staff. So. Um you want me to sit down is what you're telling me? Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, and I will mention uh, we do have uh, Kathleen Timoshenko with us. David DeGroote unfortunately fell ill today, so he's not available. But I do also have Chayton True on the line. So depending upon what your questions are, we'll see who's available to answer. Um, so my questions are regarding the PUD and what we're putting into the PUD, uh, irregardless of the pres presentation by Hillwood. Um, I think that the presentation's been great. I think they will build a great project and we'll be really happy with it. Um, as it pertains to, like, let's say it doesn't get built, there's a PUD that's attached to the property then, and it becomes an entitlement of that property that could be sold to a different party that isn't here tonight. Um, I want to make sure that some of the sustainability issues that have been talked about are actually put into the PUD so that if the property were to transfer, we would get the same stuff that we're getting from this developer, if that makes sense. Mr. True, Mr. True, are you on the phone, sir? Hold on, I can. Should I and perhaps. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, did you have a chance to hit, hear Ms. Mayor's questions regarding transfer of land? I did. Yes, I did. And just to reiterate, so I understand what is being asked is that the environmental issues that were brought up prior, if there was a way to incorporate 
those um, standards into the PUD so that if for some reason this development was not executed, a different developer could come in but would still have to adhere to potential um, you know, environmental concerns or like the type of infrastructure put on the property. Correct. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. So, um, I think that there's been statements made about it being up to lead, um, lead accreditation standards and specifically the bullet points on the packet presented here. But unless those things are incorporated into the actual properties uh, entitlements, I, I don't think we're protected from another owner buying the property and doing something completely different. That's correct. If those items are not put in the PUD, then they would not transfer over to a different um, app applicant or developer. So I guess my question maybe then back to um, the developer is, would you be willing to allow us to put that into the PUD so that it, you know, some, some uh, reference to those things that you've already agreed to do within the project, such as, uh, you know, LED lighting and, you know, the basics that are on this bullet point list. None of that, Alderman, scares us, so we'd be happy to work with staff to, to sort through that. Okay, great. Anyone else in the dais or Mr. Marks remotely? Mr. Kosarok? I have uh, just a couple questions about Geneva Drive. Nothing to do with the extension, but um, probably more for staff. Obviously, Lineage knows about this development and um, has been made aware that they'll need to correct the issue of parking and things like that. Is there any discussion of lineage? I think they um, had previously said they were prepared to build a staging area for their trucks to the west, I believe, of their property. Is there, have we heard anything about that? Yeah, I'm, Kathleen has some more information. She can address that. So they are aware that um, the parking will be enforced as it is signed. And they've actually um, done some, a couple of cleanups of their trash over the past couple months. So they're aware of that also. I think that they are evaluating options. One of the options would be to build something in Geneva, but they also have other properties. And I know that they move um, resources to other properties. So that's also something that they're considering. We um, invited them to attend uh, one of our development staff meetings to brainstorm and to, for us to be able to give them input and help uh, with those um, options. So that's where they're at. Did they attend that meeting? No, we're invite, we invited oh. them to come. Um, they haven't scheduled it yet. Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> um, but so far, no objections or anything like that from them that you've heard or any concerns? No, I think that they understand that they've been um, offered a courtesy all of these years with um, leniency, and they understand that they're a very valuable, valued company, and we don't want to create a hardship. You know, we've been talking to them and from that angle and also trying to help them analyze what's next. They know that they can't stay where they are. Um, my understanding is that they had a similar situation in Batavia where they used to park and stage there, and they moved some of that to Geneva when things changed in Batavia. So they probably will just move around again. Um, so they're just going to, essentially, you're saying, decrease their volume of trucks in and out? No, that's not that's what That's not said. what you're saying? No. I, I think that they, you know, where they are parking, you know, where they have parking available. Oh. I guess I always thought those par those trucks were idling, waiting to be loaded or unloaded, and that's why they had to be on. And so when you drive down there, no. No, I don't think they're all idling. Okay. I think some of them are just literally just parked. parked. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there any? So we're keeping um, Geneva Drive uh, two lane road with this, essentially. Correct. There's not an increase of the size, right? 
Was there any discussion? It, it seems pretty tight for, I mean, I know semis are going both ways, but it's the same company now. Was there any discussion at any point about widening that with maybe making it, you know, a solid three lanes? I'm not certain if we looked at that from an engineering standpoint. Um, I think that the traffic study evaluated the existing conditions and uh, spoke to that in the, in the traffic study. Yeah, Chayton, maybe you'll yeah. answer. Yeah, Mr. True, you have your hand raised. Do you want to comment on that? I should probably take my hand down. Um, well, <laughs> so... Yes, as Kathleen mentioned, that the traffic study would have analyzed, um, you know, the current conditions of Geneva Drive, the width, et cetera. Um, I believe, you know, one thing that came up was those trucks that are parked there shouldn't be there, and they do take up some space in terms of the width that's available for Geneva Drive. Um, but also in regards to, like, three lanes, um, I don't believe it turn lane was warranted um, or discovered as needed in the traffic study and that's why that was that didn't come up um, so currently right now the conditions of Geneva Drive seem to support um, the proposed use and the existing use um, of lineage okay all right those are all my questions thank you anyone else regarding item 12d We have a motion by Kilberg and a second by Caven on this matter. Mr. Clerk, whenever you're ready, sir, please take the roll call on item 12D. Marks. Marks, aye. Mayor. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Burkhardt. Aye. Ruby. Aye. Caven. Aye. Kilberg. Aye. Kosrog. Aye. Malaja. Aye. With a vote of 10 in the affirmative, 0 in the negative, item 12D has been approved and adopted. We jump to item 13, folks, new business. I would invite Mr. McCready to advise me as to whether or not anyone's joining us online who wishes to speak under item 13. No, no one at this time. Anyone in the audience regarding anything? From the dais. I would like at this moment to uh, turn the floor over to our esteemed colleague, our city clerk, who does have an announcement he'd like to share. A dramatic sip of water presents an extraordinary opportunity to do so. It's not water. Oh, it's not water? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is with uh, deep regret I uh, notified the mayor that I'm stepping down as city clerk, effective toward the end of the month. And I reflected on what to say, and I thought about um, what uh, this experience meant to me. It all boils down to how much I really appreciate and love history. When my wife and I discovered Geneva, we bought our, our kids here for the day, found burgers at Stockholm's, tried to keep the kids from spending too much at all the gift shops. We explored the town and we decided we wanted to live here someday. So we bought a house and moved here in 2006. We didn't know until we moved here, started ripping down a wall, that it was a Sears catalog house had been delivered here by railroad in 1937. Later, we took a historic walking tour of the east side in our neighborhood, and our house was the very first stop. Uh, we started to really understand that, that we truly do live in a historic place. When I retired and the opportunity came for me to give back to the city, we loved so much, I took this job, which I was told basically required me to sit quietly <laughs> Listen carefully what everyone else said and keep my opinions to myself. That still stands, by the way. So, yeah. you... Well, for a little while. For a little while. <laughs> my best friend said, that doesn't sound like you at all. Are you sure about this? <laughs> he was right, but it did give me a different perspective. Sitting up here in the dais at every meeting, I never failed to look at the wall, the back wall, all the photos of those mayors going back to 1867. They seemed to watch over us as we continue to make history. I saw how much dedication, sacrifice, time, and commitment our neighbors who choose to be elected officials give willingly to care for our city. I expected there would be disagreements and difference of opinion, but I also witnessed integrity, respect, goodwill, and a healthy amount of laughter and good humor as well. Any more of this? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm the liquor commissioner, so enjoy yourself. 
When my mother was born in 1911, her mother did not have the right to vote because she was a woman. When I started this job in 2017, I saw that nearly a third of the city council chairs were women. I don't know if that ever happened before, but it felt historic to me. I got to be in this room when, after a difficult, months-long debate, our elected officials overwhelmingly made the decision to make affordable housing in our city more accessible. And I heard collective voices from them saying, you are welcome here. I watched our mayor welcome and speak with every young person who came here tonight and every night, and he'll make that a special day in their lives. I got to be part of a nearly six hour meeting that started on Monday and ended on Tuesday <laughs> because that's how long it took to fully deliberate a certain issue. It also took coffee. We have all witnessed a once in a lifetime, hopefully, pandemic where technology was used to conduct the city's business in a way that those mayors in the back wall couldn't even have conceived of. I was here for a meeting during the pandemic when this room was filled to capacity with people who came to make their voices heard. That's not unusual in Geneva. But every single person here that night wore a mask because that's respectful and that's what was needed to help end the pandemic. That made me proud to say I live here. The job of city clerk of Geneva began some 150 years ago. I'm honored and grateful to have had the opportunity to carry that role for another five. Thank you. Without objection, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to enter into the record our clerk's comments and just to ask one question. You referenced that you ripped down walls in your home. You had a permit? <laughs> yeah, so did you? <laughs> that was very sweet, very sweet indeed. Who dares goes next? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the council meeting. Kosarog makes the motion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We're adjourned and we'll take just a brief moment to transition to the committee of the whole meeting. The microphones are turned off. Good evening. Um, this is the committee of the whole meeting for Monday, April 18th, 2022. Uh, my name is Alderman Swanson. I represent the Fifth Ward along with my esteemed colleague, Craig Maladra. Uh, I'd like to point out that all the aldermen are here in present uh, with the exception of Alderman Marks, who is virtual. Um, starting out, Item number two is to recommend suspending the rules to permit Council Member Swanson to chair this meeting and to vote on all action items on this agenda. Is there such a motion? Moved by Melandra. Second. No. Second by Kazarag. All in favor? Please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mark's aye. <clears throat> Thank you. Item number two is to approve the Committee of the Whole minutes from April 4, 2022. Is there such a motion? So moved. moved by Mayor. Second. Second by Bruno. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Mark aye. Uh, motion passes. Moving on to the items of business. Item 4A, consider draft resolution authorizing the purchase of an Alltech AT41M telescopic aerial device from Alltech Industries through Sourcewell Contract 012418-ALT at an estimated cost of 253,750. Is there such a motion? Moved. Moved by Burkhart. Second. Second by Maladra. Do we have any? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Alderman. Or I'm sorry, <laughs> Stephanie. We'll provide us with an update sure. on what that is. Uh, so the request is for a replacement bucket truck for truck 1006 that has been in service since 2008. The replacement unit is a hybrid with chassis powered by a gasoline engine and the hydraulics and boom functions will be battery powered. Uh, the proposed purchase is through the joint governmental purchasing agency Sourcewell that solicits competitive bids on a national basis. Uh, here's the kicker. Current delivery of uh, dates is projected for October 2024 or 42 months after receipt of order. Um, so yes, we do have to do these things in advance. Uh, as this is in the electric fund, we are able to put this 
funds aside and, and encumber those to be ready to pay for it when it arrives. So um, we do have Director Babica with us this evening if you have additional questions, but I just, I like how the air just all left the room when we said 42 months. <laughs> I don't know how many of us will still be here in October of 2025. Council Member Mayor. Um, what kind of uh, outs do we have on the contract for this then? Because we're not required to submit a down payment, uh, we could cancel the truck without a change order. Once the truck goes into production, then there would be some fees that would be encumbered upon the utility. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Seeing none, sensing none. All in favor, please state aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Item 4B, consider draft resolution waiving competitive bidding and authorizing execution of an agreement with Dami Mechanical for wastewater treatment plant digester repairs in an amount not to exceed $43,422.50. Is there such a motion? I'll remember Kurt. Second Mayor. Okay, so the wastewater plant digester cover has come out of alignment, possibly caused by an equipment failure. The repair to the cover is unique and difficult, and therefore staff is recommending that Dami Mechanical, um, as they have a proven record of providing excellent service at the plant and lift stations is our uh, recommended provider. Staff is recommending that a 10% contingency be included in the overall not to exceed amount to account for any unforeseen field changes that may occur. And Superintendent Mangescom is with us tonight, and he could actually explain to you how this cover works. He did put it in writing in the packet, but I don't know, you know, it lifts, it comes down, all of that. So if you, if you want to know more, Superintendent Van Gescom's here. Alderman Bruno. Yes, uh, Mr. Van Gescom. I would be one that would like to have a better visual of what this is doing. Well, the main component of the digester, as you can imagine, takes the, the sludge. Uh, and is brought into in, into the digester through pipes and, and pumps. Uh, the rest of it is a mixture of water and methane gas, and that's what rises the cover up and down. So, okay, so this is holding it, all of that. Correct. It in, okay. in place and to where the the gas will you know, stay in there and be able to keep the digester at a constant temperature. Okay. And the, um, uh, oftentimes when we waive competitive bidding, I kind of can infer from the, uh, uh, from the description as to why we waive competitive bidding on, on these. Uh, I, I didn't quite get that on this. It was it uh, more that it's, broken and we just need to get it done quickly or this is the only reliable trusted no I my concern is is that that it would it would not be in the city's best interest to put a uh, definitive plan together that we could bid out because we don't know for one if I mean hopefully this is going to work what they're what they're presenting to us um, but it would be that we get a contractor in there that's not going to be reliable that would be a low bidder and not be able to do the work and then we're that much farther down the road um, you know Dami mechanical has done a lot of jobs down at the the wastewater plant um, they're very experienced they're very technical uh, type of type of people and it's just my recommendation that uh, we continue to to move down the road with them making this repair okay thank you any other questions? Sensing none. Uh, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Moving on to the other side of water, item 4C. <laughs> Consider draft resolution waiving competitive bidding and authorizing an agreement with Lane, Aurora, Illinois for well number 13 component repairs at a cost not to exceed $28,500. Is there such a motion? 
Moved by Kasarag. Second. Second Mayor. Okay, so you may recall back in November that City Council awarded Municipal Well and Pump the contract for well number 13 rehabilitation. The pump and motor was removed and inspected, and the inspection concluded that the pump and motor could not be rebuilt. The cost for a replacement pump bull assembly is $33,670, and a new motor is $94,690. So over the years, staff has retained surplus components from other projects, and fortunately, we have a pump bull assembly and motor that is the size needed for well number 13. So sometimes it pays to hoard stuff. Uh, the manufacturer's representative Lane in Aurora, Illinois, recently inspected the pump bowl assembly and motor, and the motor is in excellent condition and can be utilized in well 13, but the pump bowl assembly will need to be rebuilt at a cost of 28500 So basically this results in a savings of nearly $100,000 um, as opposed to replacing everything. Um, so again, Superintendent Matt Guest comes with us if you have any additional questions. But kudos to his staff. Are there any questions on well number 13? Alderman Kilber. Where did the motor come from? Uh, in other words, if we replaced a, sure. uh, a functioning motor that uh, was in great shape, where did it come from? Uh, how did we have an inventory of it? Uh, when the new deep wells were built uh, off of Peck Road uh, in 2006, okay. uh, we had a situation to where uh, the one motor for one of the wells, I believe it was well 12, uh, we had some issues with it. And so we worked with the, uh, uh, I believe it was Water Well Solutions at the time who had the contract for the well. And we went ahead at, at that time and got a uh, new motor uh, put in. The motor that we were having problems with was rebuilt, and we uh, kept that in, in storage. So Okay. So, yeah, that all makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure there are people in the public might say, well, where did, the, where did this perfectly right, working right. motor come from? Because it, obviously it's a huge expenditure. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's not like we're carrying an inventory or replacement parts like this. No, okay. no. And the only reason that we hung on to the, the pump bowl assembly was that was the one that was removed from well seven in the Fox Run subdivision when that was decommissioned. So it was, it was only five years old at the time. So we, we hung on to that. So good. It's good that you didn't sell it to American pickers. There you go. <laughs> Any other questions? Sensing none. Um, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. That uh, moves us to public comment, which uh, I will start out. And, and I wanted to thank uh, City Clerk Roger for uh, serving us for the past five years. Um, you mentioned history in, in your uh, going away speech and, and you, you created some as well. So it's been a pleasure serving with you and, and I'm proud that I could chair your, your final meeting with the city of Geneva. Thank you. And as a resident of the fifth ward, you are always encouraged to tell any, your feelings on any matters affecting the city. You don't need to be silent. I've already warned Craig. I'm, okay. now, I'm now a constituent for sure. So. Thank you very much. Any other, uh, anyone else with new business? Anyone online, Ben? That brings us to item number six, which would be adjournment. Is anyone interested in doing so? So moved. Alderman Bruno. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.